Hey everybody, I'm Sarah the Real Simple Mama and we are going to talk about chicken roosts as I walk on steadily out here. So I'm going to talk fast because I'm, this is so dorky, I'm really really excited about doing this video as I figure out how to open my own gate. Oh look at these sleepy birds. So I think my alpha is in there laying an egg at like 7 o'clock at night because why not? So we're going to sit out here and just talk to some birds. So here's the deal. Um, I love reading about new stuff, um, you know, learning the things I didn't even know that I didn't know. And one thing I've been wanting to work on is improving my roosts for my chickens. For this particular coop, this is the Innovation Pet Deluxe Coop Kit. I'm sorry, I don't have a better model name or number for you. That's all they call it. Um, right now it's running about 270 on tractor supply. I've done other reviews and hacks for this coop and things like that. Look at these birds waiting to go to bed. Um, but the problem is that, first of all, they advertise that this coop is for six to eight birds, which you see is not working. Now I'm gonna zoom in here so you can hopefully see these these fluff butts, because this is a perfect example. Whoop, oh, there goes, there goes somebody fell off. So the, I, that I think is a misnomer. I think this coop might be good for six chickens if you did some, you know, aftermarket work if you will if you soup up your coop a little bit then it could be good for six but max of six the other thing is the way this coop is designed inside for all the ventilation for all the access points for um you know good quality materials all the compliments that i have for it um the way the roost in the nesting box zone inside is designed is poor because the roosts are not really a, a good shape or size and they're also not high enough so what I did is I started thinking, oh, I hear bats. As I started thinking about, um, you know, wanting to, to upgrade and change some stuff, right? So I've been saving branches and I've got some extra branches in there right now that they're kind of stepping over as I get them used to the idea, um, things like that. And part of this inspiration came from Animal Overload. I have to make sure I don't say Animal Overlord because that's something completely different. Um, hopefully he will comment at when he sees this video so you guys can go follow him and look at his coop tour. He has the same coop and he's put some two by fours in, just laying them flat. So essentially the four inch pieces like this, you know, and here's the two inch like going horizontally. And I thought, well, that's kind of interesting, but I, I guess that's cool. That works, you know, whatever. And the other night, after my kids went to bed because I'm super cool, I had a glass of wine and I was reading about chicken roosts because you want to be like me, right? So um, the more I read and I learned, and I'll give you my sources down here in the, the comments of the video, um, but the more I read, the more it was like, wow, this is really fascinating and I'm learning all of this stuff that I didn't even know I didn't know, but oh, I was going about this kind of wrong. So first of all, Animal Overload has an awesome system and what he did is very simple and it's cheap and it's functional and it works. So kudos to him on that um, but let me tell you first of all what I've learned just random facts everything that I can just bleh, vomit out and teach you about chicken sleep um, and this is relevant whether you have a coop kit or your chickens are in a barn or you know you're building something or I mean it doesn't really matter so here's random facts about chicken sleep ready okay first of all um, as you can see when chickens are roosting when we're talking in a minute about this space I'm trying to get my hand up here you need to think about how much of a parking space each bird needs that's the fundamental problem with this coop is they're like oh yeah the way we've got these dimensions saying eight chickens that means each chicken gets four or five inches across maybe and that's for them to sleep all night yeah right that's not gonna work so um, if you've got a normal chicken now frizzles bantams um, silkies to an extent if you've got ducks or quail or something else then you know you measuring <laughs> The uh, width of your chicken's backside, of course, is going to be different of your bird. But for normal chickens, I would say eight inches is good. Um, and the websites that I was looking at said the same thing. So, yay, I got something right. So, they want to have space to where they're, they're next to each other, um, to where they don't feel like they're just exposed and alone. Uh, but they also don't want to be too cramped, particularly in summer. And I've got other videos about... Everybody's talking, lacy bird. If you guys saw my old videos when I had Dottie, my original Wyandotte, exactly the same way. Like, she just never shut up. It's so funny. So, see, right now, I know it's getting dark. I apologize. But you see how Gracie and Lacey are up there. They could be inches away from each other and be on either side. But Gracie's wanting to snuggle up right next to her. 
So, um, like I was saying, I do have videos that talk about how to make sure that your chickens don't overheat. All kinds of really cheap, easy ideas. You don't really have to buy anything um, to make sure they don't get too hot. And here's why. When chickens sleep, they sleep very deeply. They sleep so deeply that they will continue to poop all night, which is why when you let them out in the morning, you got to clean up. So they'll sleep really, really deeply, even to the point where if there's like an attack that happens, some of the other birds may not even necessarily wake up. Um, I've read on my backyard chicken forum in the San Antonio area about people who are like, I don't understand what could have, you know, come in and killed a couple of my birds and my rooster didn't even help them. Like what a worthless rooster. And it's like, well, no, maybe not. Like honestly, maybe he slept through it, which is just horrible. And you know, men sleep through anything anyway, right? Just kidding. Um, but chickens will sleep really deeply to where they're not really going to move. They're not going to be disturbed by, you know, something going on unless it's directly affecting them, touching them, grabbing them, whatever. And they will poop. So when you're thinking about a roost um, and building something, you need to really think about that. Um, the main thing that I learned where I was like, oh, is when chickens, and I'm going to stick my hand up here. So when chickens sleep, they do not grab on to their roost like other birds do. Now, maybe Dean can put in the comments here what his lovebirds do. Dean has some other birds. If you guys have ducks or quail or I, I don't know, like Mongolian peacocks, I don't know. Um, tell me what your birds do when they sleep. You can send me pictures to my email address that I'll put down here. But chickens do not. So chickens will actually, their feet just stay flat. And so that's something to keep in mind. And that's where I was saying that Animal Overload got it exactly right. Because he has like these big wide 2 by 4s that chickens don't need to grab on anything because they won't anyway. They want to sleep flat. And my lazy fat birds, <clears throat> case in point, example A, um, who like to sleep in the nesting boxes, that makes perfect sense. Because then they're not... Like, you want me to balance on, like, this narrow little bar all night that feels weird. Well, my feet don't really grab that well, and I sleep deeply. So, now, let's talk about what you want to build. And I know it's getting dark. So, um, you can see my other content if you want to look in there. I mean, inside the coop, it is what it is. So, for, that's all the random things that I learned. Now, as far as building something, upgrading something, improving something, keep all of those things in mind. Also, keep in mind... A really good system like if I had a barn or if I had more chickens and I had you know a more vertical space I would do like a ladder system to looking at it it would be like this and you've got a rung that's a two by four here and then staggered up you've got another rung that's a two by four and etc etc so the chickens can hop up and interestingly enough if you went and looked at your chickens and they had a staggered roost like that the birds who are the alpha are the ones who go all the way up top because chickens want to be off of the ground it's an instinctive thing it's I will be less likely to be grabbed by a predator whether it's a fox possum raccoon snake um alligator you know <laughs> hawk owl whatever if i'm off the ground and the alphas get dibs on the highest spots hmm interesting so like if anybody knows of like a chicken psychology degree i could go and get like that would be amazing like does devry have one i don't know okay anyways so that would be a great staggered system now two things you want to keep in mind if you're doing a staggered type roost or I mean just anything in general first of all like I said you got to make sure that there's a way you can get the poop out from underneath animal overload to quote him again he took the actual um, the PDZ tray whoosh, he completely took it out so it's two by four and then it's nothing down to the first ground floor so the good news is is that the chickens just poop down onto the ground that's easy to rake out the bad news is you better hope that your birds don't fall and go you know and falling down onto the ground um, so you'd have to do that change you'd have to take that tray out you know during the day or maybe slide it out gradually over a couple of days to kind of teach your birds like hey this isn't gonna be here anymore your little safety net so and if you're doing a staggered system here comes my big girl if you're doing a staggered system you want to make sure that um, the chickens aren't gonna be pooping on each other when they are sleeping because remember they will poop while they are asleep which is super cool um, the other thing to keep in mind is, and I, I say this like as a public service announcement for chickens, um, Nikki, my friend Nikki, can attest to this, I can attest to this. All of your birds, particularly if they're leghorns or if they're just heavier breeds, I'm trying to see if you guys can see some fireflies. Um, some of the heavier breeds, when they hop down off of things, whether it's their roost or it's just a branch or it's them, I don't know, getting up in the morning they can hurt themselves they can either strain or sprain their leg like up by their hip or they can damage their feet and give themselves bumblefoot oh no god not bumblefoot anything but that oh guys like seriously it freaks me out 
but seriously so you want to make sure whether you're doing staggered roosts or it's something like animal overload where it's just a roost and then space down underneath you want to make sure um, it's at least I don't know it doesn't have to be that far off the ground four inches six inches is sufficient for the chickens to feel safe but you don't want it to be like a foot or two off the ground even if your birds don't have their wings clipped even if they um, you know even if they're able to fly oh everybody's going to bed and like hey get your foot out of my face What's wrong, Gracie? Gracie's like, man, y'all are crazy. Now see, if you haven't seen my other video yet, my alpha is going into the quarantine tonight, so she doesn't know that, but I'm gonna kick her out in a second. I'm trying to let you guys see a little bit of sunlight. So you wanna make sure that your roosts are not that far off the ground, or if you're doing a staggered system, make sure it's easy for your birds to hop from level one up to level two, level three, level four, and then down in the morning to get back down without having to do a huge jump, especially down to the ground. Um, they can hurt their joints, they can give themselves bumblefoot because they're super cool like that and you do not want to be dealing with that so what i'm going to be doing now is taking out the branch theory i need to find some two by fours of course you want to make sure that they are sanded they are smooth and then with that i'm gonna i don't know over this weekend is my my daughter's birthday party so maybe not this weekend but in the next few weeks because this isn't an emergency type situation it's just improving the existing um, but i definitely want to do something better for five birds to all be in their happy tour they've all got their own parking spot they have plenty of horizontal space um, it's still easy to clean they don't try to sleep in nesting boxes things like that you could block up nesting boxes you can have the two by fours if you're in this coop go all the way through to the nesting boxes but i mean then you've got to go out and move that every day and i don't want to deal with that so um so that's basically in a 10 or 11 minute video of everything that i know about chicken sleep which is fascinating so again i've got those resources there hoping you guys are hearing some of the evening sounds here i've got fireflies out here i don't know if you can see them so but now i'm encouraged you know there's going to be some changes going and then once i've got the changes of course i will be giving you a tour but i was just really excited to come out here and be like guys look at everything i learned um, about chicken sleep and the misconceptions so those of you who are thinking about building a coop or you've got one um, you know, you, you've got chicks that are about ready to move outside, whatever the case may be. Um, now you know a little bit more and you can watch them. So let me know in the comments what you do for chicken roosts. Um, hopefully Animal Overload will make an appearance so we can all go follow him and watch his, his chicken tour video because it's really cool. Um, and then if you've got other birds, non-chickens, let me know, like, what do they do when they sleep? Do they move at all? Do they poop in their sleep? Do they grab onto anything? Or do they like their feet flat? Because this is really, really interesting to me, and it's, it's totally not what I would have thought. So showing you a dark coop and a dark crate of shame. I'm going to go catch my alpha and put her in there. So this is Sarah, the Real Simple Mama. Let me know how you're doing. Let me know what you think, and we'll be back soon.